Magandang araw mga bata! Ako si Ma'am Regine, ang teacher mo sa math. And today we will be learning about Venn Diagram. This is the second lesson from quarter 1 of G7 Mathematics. Kaya tara na, and let's do the math. A Venn Diagram is a diagram that uses circles to represent sets. The relation between the sets is indicated by the arrangement of circles. The Venn diagram is a way of representing sets visually. And it is named after its inventor, the British mathematician, John Venn. These are some of the examples of how Venn diagrams look like. Venn diagrams are actually illustrated depending on the relationship being shown in each set. Use Venn diagram to represent the following sets. So, given this Venn diagram for a universal set U with two overlapping circles, set A and set B, let's represent these sets. Set U or the universal set must include 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Set A must have 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And set B must have 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. From these set notations, we know that the universal set includes all the counting numbers from 1 to 10. So, tignan natin ang sets A and B. From these two sets, which elements ba are common to both of them? So, let's start from there. Pansin natin which common elements ang meron silang dalawa. We have 6 and 8. Since itong mga numbers na ito ay common to both sets, we will put them sa gitna nila, dun sa part na may overlap yung circle. Next, let's focus on set A. Aside from 6 and 8, ang set A ay meron ding 2, 4, and 10. So, dito kay set A, ito yung kanyang circle, ito yung kanyang mga elements. Okay, set B naman, aside from 6 and 8, meron din siyang 5, 7, and 9. Now, meron tayong mga elements ng universal set ang hindi nabanggit or hindi kasali sa sets A and B. Since sila ay part ng universal set, ilalagay pa rin natin sila sa universal set, pero hindi nga lang sa loob ng mga bilog. So, we have 1, and we also have 3. It means that 1 and 3 are elements of the universal set but not elements of sets A and B. Next, let's use the Venn diagram to represent the following sets and set operations. Set A, we have 2, 5, 6, 8, and 9. Set B, 1, 3, 7, 9. Set C ay may elements na 4, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Set operations naman. A intersect C ay 8 and 9. B intersect C ay 7 and 9. And A intersect B intersect C is 9. So, kung mapapansin natin, meron tayong universal set with 3 sets A, B, and C. Overlap siya at ito yung common na side na overlap circle. Ayon dito sa set notation, their common element, yung common sa kanilang tatlong set ay 9. So therefore, dito natin ilalagay si 9. Which is the part ng circle na common sa kanilang tatlo. Next, let's focus on A intersect C. Aside from 9, meron din silang common na 8. So, if this is set A and if this is set C, ang common nila, yung overlap part ng kanilang circle ay eto, 8 and 9. For B and C naman, aside from 9, they also have 7. So, if this is set B and this is set C, ang common elements nila ay nandito sa kanilang part ng overlap circle ng B and C. Common elements are 9 and 7. So, ngayon naman, let's focus on set A. Aside from 8 and 9, set A also have the elements 2, 5, and 6. 
So, ang set A ay may limang element. So, may limang number na nandito sa kanyang bilog. For set C, aside from 9, we also have 1 and 3. Ang sabi sa set notation, set B has 4 elements. So, apat lang yung nandito sa kanyang circle. For set C naman, aside from 7, 9, and 8, meron din siyang elements na 4 and 10. So, ito yung circle ni set C. Meron siyang limang elements at yan napapalob sa kanyang circle. Word problem. 60 students of grade 7 charity were asked if they have pet animals at home. 40 of the students have dogs and 35 have cats. How many students have dogs only? How many students own cats only? And how many students have both dogs and cats? So, ito yung kanyang universal set for G7 charity. We have two circles pertaining to dogs and cats. To solve, let S1 be the set of students with dogs only. Set 2 is the set of students with both pets. Dun siya sa gitna. Next, S3 is the set of students with cats only. Let's use this formula. Cardinality of S1 plus cardinality of S2 plus cardinality of S3 is equal to the total number of G7 charity students. So, kopyain lang natin yung formula. And then, we substitute the total number of G7 charity students with 60 because ayon sa ating word problem, there are 60 students from G7 charity. First, we will try to find out S3, the cardinality of S3. How many students have cats only? So, bring down the same formula. Let's ignore the cardinality of S1 and S2 because we're trying to find out S3. And then, let's put in the number of students with dogs. In this case, 40. Dahil sabi sa problem, 40 of the students have dogs. Subtract lang natin sila. 60 minus 40 is 20. So, the cardinality of S3 is 20. Meaning, there are 20 out of 60 students from G7 charity that have cats only. This time, we're trying to find out the cardinality of S1, the number of students with dogs only. So, ganun pa rin, same formula tayo. However, ilalagay na natin dito below 60 is the number of students with cats. In this case, 35. Dahil sabi sa word problem, 35 have cats. So, subtract natin sila. We're trying to find out the cardinality of S1. That is 60 minus 35 I, 25. Therefore, 25 out of 60 students from G7 charity have dogs only. Now, since we have both the values of S1 and S3, let's substitute those values. So, instead of writing S1, we write here 25 because 25 of the students have dogs only. We're trying to find out the cardinality of S2, which is the number of students with both pets. Pareho silang may dogs and cats. And then, S3 ay sinubstitute natin ng 20 dahil... There are 20 students na merong cats lamang. And then, let's equal them to 60, the total number of G7 charity students. So, bring down natin si cardinality of S2. Equal natin siya kay 60. And then, kung mapapansin ninyo, inilipat natin si 25 at si 20 dito sa kabila. Isipin natin na si equal sign ay yung gitna nila. This is the left side. And this is the right side. What we will do in this case is we will transpose the values. So, mapapansin natin, 
Itong 25 and 20 ay numbers lamang. Wala siyang kasamang letters. So, isama natin siya dito kay 60. Dahil si 60 ay number lamang. Doon tayo, gagawin natin silang similar yung kanyang itsura. So, only cardinality of S2 ay left on this left side, ililipat natin yung 25 and 20 sa right. One rule that we can apply when you try to transpose values ay, they change signs. So, in this case, ang 25 sa left side at ang 20 sa left side ay both positive. When we try to transpose them or if we try to transfer them from left to the right side, they become negative because their signs are being reciprocal. So, si 25, ililipat na natin dito. Si 20, ililipat din. So, from positive 25 and positive 20, they become negative 25 and negative 20. We try to bring down cardinality of S2 and then we have equal 15. Saan ang galing yung 15? So, we have 60 minus 25 is 35 and then 35 minus 20 is 15. Therefore, 15 out of 60 students from G7 Charity have both cats and dogs. Now that we know the values of S1, S2, and S3, we can now use a Venn diagram to represent the numbers. So for S1, this is the set of students with dogs only. So for S1, we have 25. For S3 naman, the set of students with cats only. We have 20. And for S2, the set of students with both pets, with both dogs and cats, we have 15. So, given this Venn diagram, makikita natin yung mga numbers na binigay dito sa word problem. So, let's focus on the circle for the dogs. This is the set for the dogs. Sabi dito ay, there are 40 of the students, so there are 40 students out of 60 na merong mga dogs. So, itong 25 ay yung number ng mga bata na ang kanilang pet ay dogs lamang. Itong 15 naman ay mga batang merong dog, meron din silang cat. So, if we add them, 25 plus 15 is 40. So, 40 out of 60 students ng grade 7 charity ay merong dogs. Next, for cats naman, ang sabi rito ay 35 have cats. 20 ang merong cats lamang and 15 naman ang merong both dogs and cats and if we add them 15 plus 20 ay 35 and if we add all of these numbers 25 plus 15 is 40 plus 20 it's a total of 60 where is there are 60 students of grade 7 charity complete the Venn diagram. So, we will be using this universal set na merong two overlapping circles for two sets A and B. So, we will be representing this set. The set of whole numbers from 15 to 30. Set A is the set of all even numbers in this set, 15 to 30, while set B is the set of all odd numbers in this set, 15 to 30. So, let's start. Any number that can be exactly divided by 2 is called an even number. So from 15, since 15 is not an even number, let's start with 16. Lalagay natin siya sa circle ng A for even numbers. 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Since ang set lang dito na rinerepresent niya ay 15 to 30, any number less than 15 or larger than 30 ay hindi kasama sa set na ito. Next, let's have set B. Any number that cannot be divided by 2 is called an odd number. So starting from 15, lagay natin siya sa B since siya isang odd number. 17, 19, 21, 23, 25, 27, and 29. So, yun yung ating last odd number within this set. Kung mapapansin natin, 
wala tayong number na nailagay sa gitna nila dun sa part na nag-overlap yung kanilang mga circle. That is because this is an example of a disjoint set. A disjoint set is a kind of set wherein there are no common elements. Tulad nito, there is no specific number that is both even and odd. Kaya walang laman yan. So aside from this one, we can also represent a disjoint set just like this. So sa isang universal set, merong dalawang bilog. Since hindi naman kailangan na nag-overlap yung kanilang circle dahil wala silang common element, pwede natin silang i-separate. At nandun yung mga elements sa loob nila. Another one. Let's represent the set of whole numbers from 10 to 30. Set A is the set of all even numbers in this set from 10 to 30 lamang. While set B naman is for the multiples of 4 in this set. So let's start with set B. A multiple is the result of multiplying a number by another number but not 0. So start tayo sa set B. Ito yung circle na nandito sa pinakaloob. 4 times 1 is 4. So, ang 4 ay mas maliit sa 10 at hindi siya included sa 10 to 30, kaya hindi siya mailalagay dito sa B. 4 times 2 is 8, ganun din, masyado siyang mababa. 4 times 3 is 12. Pasok, pasok siya dun sa 10 to 30. So, pwede natin siyang ilagay sa loob ng B. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 8 is 32. That is already larger than 30. Kaya hindi na natin siya kailangang include sa set B. Now, let's go to set A. All even numbers naman tayo from 10 to 30. Let's start from 10. 10 is an even number. 12. 12 is an even number pero nandito na siya sa loob ng set B. Kaya let's leave it as it is. 14 16 Nasa loob na rin 18 20 Nasa set B na 22 24 Nandun na rin 26 And 30 So, iyon na yun Kung papansinin natin Set B Is inside the circle of set A Meaning, lahat ng multiples ng 4 ay even numbers din na nasa loob ng 10 to 30. This is an example of a Venn diagram for subsets. In this case, set B is a subset of set A. Meaning, every element of set B is also an element of set A. And that's it for Venn Diagram, mga bata. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and Teacher Musamad for more G7 lessons based on MELKS. I will really appreciate it if you will also hit the like button and also please share this video para mas marami pang G7 na mga bata ang maabot ko at maturuan ko dahil ako si Mamri Jean, ang Teacher Musamad.